Benny, Office Club member, former South High principal, and I did work at Kohler for a year or two. Thank you guys, and good luck to all of you. We are here to pay tribute to each of you student athletes and to acknowledge your participation over the last four years. So relax, have fun, and enjoy this evening's program. We do have a number of special guests which I'd like to introduce at this time. Sitting to my right, on the table on the right, is Dr. Joseph Sheehan. Superintendent of Schools at Sheboygan. Uh, Mr. Cal Holzheimer, Lutheran High School Principal and Athletic Director. Mr. Jason Bull, Principal of North High School. Mr. Michael Trimberger, Principal of South High School. <coughs> and to my left, uh, I'm not sure if you have my left, Mr. Steve Peterson is with me on the right. Very good. My other left. He's the treasurer of the Elks We Are Committee. Does a great job of keeping us uh, financially intact. To my left is Mr. Tom Fogel and Mr. Kevin Pauls, co-chairman of the Elks We Are Scholarship Committee. The applications you submitted tonight, they reviewed with their committee and have come up with the final selection. We also have with us an individual who has written many articles relating to all of your teams and has done an excellent job of reporting sports in the local Sheboygan press. Would you please acknowledge Mr. McLean Bennett. I'd like to introduce the individual seated at our head table beginning from my left would be Mr. Dan Stangle, Activities Director at Sheboygan North High School. Mr. Chris Hine, Activities Director at Sheboygan South High School. Mr. Doug Bocchini, Athletic Director at Kohler High School. And Deborah Van Duren, Van Drunen, AD at Sheboygan, Christian, uh, Sheboygan County Christian High School. To my right is Mr. Bill Wagner, Chairman of our Elk Square Committee. It was an outstanding job of organizing this event, as well as other ways in which we reach to the scholarships. To his right is Mr. John McLaughlin, our guest speaker. Our exalted ruler of Sheboygan Elks 299 is Mr. Michael Roth. And then we have representing the Harold Godsacker Award, Mr. Todd Decker. At this time, I would like to ask the dining staff to come forward. And could we all please give a round of applause for another excellent job in serving our food this evening. Of the members, 
and several Elks families will present another $15,000 in scholarships and awards to 16 students. Our second purpose is to support youth sports activities throughout the county. It is very possible many of you or someone you know has participated in activities that the committee supports. Some of the organization's activities through the years include Sheboygan Youth Football, the Diamonds, the Strikers, Sheboygan Area Youth Soccer, American Legion Baseball, uh, the Special Olympics programs, and on the Elks basis, the Elks Hoop Shoot, if you've ever competed in that, basketball players, uh, the Elks Soccer Skills Competition at the SESO Tournament, just to name a few. Plus, we also run a also help uh, host a huge junior bowling tournament for, for scholarships. You might also be asking, who is this committee? Those of you on this side of the room know me, you've seen me more than enough, right? Right, Sam? Okay. Uh, well, you may know a few of the members. Four members are current coaches at North or South, North or South High School. Uh, coaches Walters Wright and Van Bagel at North and Coach Wyman at South are members of this committee. There are also five former coaches from North and South and also from the middle school level that are also on this committee. Uh, those who have North, Valley Little Mr. Engels, if you play soccer. Uh, he, he coached somewhat recently. Otherwise, the next recent retired coach, I think, is Neil. And that goes back when you guys were in first grade. <laughs> Uh, the rest of the members are members of the community that have attended events at the high schools as their children have gone through them, and some even attend, even though they have no children participating. They may have graduated from North, South, Lutheran, Christian, whatever the case may be. Like the young man in the back of the room standing there in the tie looking dapper, Mr. Gutschow, he's had, a, he's had a lot of basketball games and a lot of football games. He's had a lot of things, but he's just one of many members of the community or members of the committee that attend your games. They attend because they like and appreciate what you do. Excellent. It takes a lot to conduct this banquet, and there are some things that need to be extended. First, the lodge membership. Their contributions provided the meal you ate tonight. On the back of the ticket, there was a name of a member or a member's widow. Send that person a note thanking them for their donation. They truly appreciate receiving them. As chairman, I hear from members that have received thank you notes, and they are truly impressed with the quality of the person who attends this banquet. Uh, in fact, the person who has my ticket has already thanked me. Where are you, Coach Sands? Uh, there he is in the back of the room. He thanked me on Friday night when he saw me at the uh, JV track. Secondly, I want to thank a member of the committee that's been on this committee for a long, long time, Mr. Bill Richards. For many years, he's done an exceptional job getting speakers for this banquet with varying degrees of assistance from other members of the committee. Uh, in a discussion earlier tonight, he said he's been at that for about 40 years. And when you take a look in the program at the list of, list of names of people that have spoken here, he's done one heck of a job. Third, I want to thank the longstanding corporate sponsor, Dean's Food, and going back when it was when they were known as very fine and before that Lake the Lake. That healthy drink tonight was donated by them and they've been doing it for years. Uh, I'm not sure how long, maybe they go back to the first banquet in 1959. Lastly, I want to thank the committee members that are here that that have helped tonight in putting this and making this banquet run as smoothly as it as it is. Uh, to them, thank you very much. Your work is greatly appreciated. Uh, last thing I want to do, or second last thing I want to do, is welcome Mr. John McLaughlin to tonight's banquet. I'm not exactly sure who this age is, me or him, but I remember going to the Milwaukee Bucks game back when I was in junior high and high school, watching him play at the old Milwaukee Arena. Uh, his exploits as a basketball player in high school and college in the NBA are well documented, as is, as is his career as one of the voices of the Milwaukee Bucks for many, many years. One truly noteworthy aspect of John is his service and commitment to the community. He is one of the founders, along with Eddie Doucette, of the Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer, which he and Eddie founded back in 1976. 
and he continues with his involvement as president of that organization. He also sits on the athletic board for the Wisconsin Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and has emeritus status on the board of trustees for the Medical College of Wisconsin. At this time, I'd like to introduce the exalted ruler of Elks Lodge 299, Mr. Mike Roth.
on their plates when I started this job 12 years ago, even then there wasn't as many uh, obligations for your time. So how you balance those uh, and represent North High School uh, with work and, and uh, what you have going on at home is commendable and we thank you. So, uh, Michael Baca, Erica Berger, Mariah Bennett, Taylor Peterwolf, Seneda Biandera, Erica Brahan, Taylor Brunigi, Dominic Woodson, Austin Campbell, Nick Cook, Nick Cox, Trevor Damcott, Nate Davis, Danny Decker, Molly Delavan, Adrian Essex, Abby Flasher, Jacob Fritz, Gabriel Galante, Jaris Gallimore, Maggie Gentine, Lindsay Gussie, Tyler Griesmeyer, Andrew Bruno, Marcel Harris, Emily Henning, Tori Hoppy, Lauren Hundley, Darcy Kerrigan, Ellis Kirkwood, Abby Buckham, Macy Conter, Evan Corus, Aaron Krugel, Katrina Trutzik, Paige Kukla, Cole Kukla, Sarah Lightbomb, Nick Lordy, Alyssa Lutsky, Jordan Marquez, Danielle Meyer, Jessica Moyer, Weston Nelson, Maddie Opie, Antonio Lucia, <coughs> Samantha Parker, Jake Pellin, Sam Elza, Nathan Pfeiffer, Brett Pokerzinski, Sarah Prescott, Will Rubnick, Jacob Schmidt, Aaron Schmidt, Callian Schroeder, Abby Schubert, Andy Seymour, Ian Schinner, Ali Spalding, Claudia Stanskis, Margaret Stanskis, Noah Stengel, Ross Taggart, Taylor Thimar, Tyler Thimar, Matt Thibault, Melissa Urbanic, CJ Dusado, Ben Vivago, Annie Van Zeele, Sarah Warden, and Danny Wilde. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stengel. We will now have Mr. Doug Lucchini, the athletic director of Fuller High School, who's the coaches and senior letter winners from Fuller High School. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate all the student athletes from all five schools here tonight and wish all of you the best in your future. A special thank you to our core partners, Sheboygan Lutheran and Sheboygan Christian. These partnerships allow all our students to participate in more opportunities than our schools could handle alone. To the Oats Club, again, thank you and your organization for putting together this great event every year for us. Your continual commitment to our students throughout the Floyd area is tremendous. So, I'll start with the coaches. Tonight we are joined by several of our coaches who would like to thank for all their efforts that they give to our athletes. These coaches dedicate not only to their own teams, but most of them give, give across several teams and other sports and bombs. So coaches, please stand and stay standing until all your names are called. Ken Rader, 
Matt Bynes, Matt Zavada, Derek Journey, John Cole, Dwayne Dumay, Eric Eckers, Kelly Cole, Eric Whitworth, I think I have them all. Coaches, again, thank you very much. <laughs>
Jason Dekarski, Katerina Dicker, Eric Fisher, Cameron Fuller, Amariah Burr, Robert Hoffman, Chelsea Hunt, Devante Yerkes, Benjamin Johnson, Samantha Kirsten, Caitlin Lampy, Jennifer Leonard, Jacob Malwitz, Mitchell Martinez, Cody McLaughlin, Jacob Miller, Kayla Nightway, Brandon Nelson, Carly Knoll, Mackenzie Knowlton, Lauren File, Camber Posowitz, Noemi Polito, Stephen Rodriguez, Samantha Rolsey, Taylor Grupo, Monica Sampson, Sarah Shrink, Mercedes Schuckert, Joseph Schultz, Eddie, excuse me, Eddie Shanklin III, Emma Sharp, Courtney Stewart, Stacy Stone, John Sullivan, Rachel Van Sluis, Brianna Wojcik, Alina Jean, Robert Yang, Tua Yen Dang, and Tyler Zeitz. I hope I didn't miss anybody. So thank you on behalf of Sporting South High School again, and best of luck in the future, guys. Thank you.
She is the athletic director from Sheboygan County Christian High School. senior football players who did all, I, I didn't know hustle anybody or I'll work anybody uh, on that night so I, I do want to ask the senior football players here to stand so I'll, and I'll accept this trophy on behalf of them. Thank you guys. Shaman, uh, Nick Rhino, and of course Tom Fogel. Um, 
Tonight's first award uh, is the Gridiron Committee Academic Excellence Award in Memory of Dutch Thornton. This award goes back to 1959. Uh, the award is a $500 scholarship to uh, a, football, a, a football player from North and from South, sponsored by the Dutch Gridiron Committee. Dutch Thornton was an original member of this group and he was an excellent athlete. Uh, this, uh, this award goes to the football player for each team with the highest GPA from South Dakota. So the first award tonight is for the North High, for the North High recipient. He had six letters, three in football, two in wrestling, one in track, uh, two-time MVP, three-time captain in football, and most improved wrestler. He is attending the Colorado School of the Mines and a G, uh, weighted GPA of 5022. And the recipient from North High is Carson Bell. Uh, Carson is competing at the National DECA Conference. Uh, his, uh, uh, what is it, his subject matter, his category that is competing in the sport management and entertainment. And so he is out west right now doing that. So, uh, we, he's going to accept that in his, uh, uh, Tom's going to accept that in his uh, staff. The recipient from South is a four, uh, four letter winner, two in football, two in wrestling. He's a two sport team captain and most improved player. He's attending the University of Wisconsin Whitewater and a weighted GPA of 4.58. That is Jacob Mullins. <laughs>
believed in character building that high school sports provides. He appreciated the student athlete and the work, and, and you know, the, the one especially that had to work a little bit harder. Uh, he wanted to always appreciate the one who really uh, worked through adversity. The, this athlete is a very talented one and had to overcome an injury during his junior season. He came back through a lot of hard work and had a great senior season. Uh, he had eight letters, four in track, four in cross country, three-time captain, two-time MVP. He was a two-time all-conference and state qualifier in cross country and two indoor field house records in track. Uh, his GPA is 367 out of a four-point scale. He's attending the University of Oshkosh. This recipient is from North High, Trevor Hancock. <laughs>
Robert had been elected into many sponsorship Hall of Fames throughout the years and also received the Community Sponsor of the Year Award. On their 35th wedding anniversary, my grandpa and grandma founded the Sheboygan County Children with Cancer Fund. This local fund, which is still going strong today, raises money to help families that have children with cancer pay for things like gas cards, hotels, weights, expensive medicines, and other related expenses. My grandpa also played a lot of sports throughout the years that included football, basketball, golf, and baseball, which he excelled at the most. In high school, my grandpa started at third base on the varsity as a freshman on the varsity baseball team and then lost in the state finals. Um, Bob went on to play college baseball at Stout and then finished his baseball career playing in the Wisconsin State Semi-Pro League. His final game came at the Milwaukee County Stadium where he was scouted by St. Louis Cardinals but did not make the team because he was too slow. <laughs> um, because of my grandpa's love for baseball and youth sports, my family would like to be awarding two $1,000 scholarships to student athletes who display good citizenship, good academics, and lastly, who excel in baseball and or softball. Okay, the softball recipient for the first annual Robert L. Gutshaw Memorial Scholarship goes to individual that has seven letters, three in uh, volleyball, four in softball, team captain, all-conference honorable mention in softball last year, so this year hopefully that uh, improves for her. Second team in all area in volleyball, 3.91 out of a four-point scale, attending Loyola University of Chicago. This year's Softball recipient for the Robert L. Gutshaw Memorial Scholarship goes to North High Alexandria Spalding. Okay, baseball recipient has seven letters, four in baseball, three in basketball. Team awards two sport team MVP. Other awards, Legion Baseball All-Star Game and MVP of that All-Star Game. 4.0 out of a four point scale, ranked number one in the class, attending Augustana College. This year's baseball recipient for the Robert L. Gutshaw Memorial Scholarship goes to South High, Carter Allen. It's 
some of you guys are from well, you're a former teacher, so <laughs> surprises me, but this is so good. Uh, I, eight letters, four soccer, three basketball, one track, team awards, two-time two-sport team captain, others, second team all-conference in basketball and soccer, member of the 2012 state championship team and a starter on this year's state team for basketball. Great point average is 3.81. Looking to attend UW-Madison. Recipient from Lutheran High, Jeff Hess.
our ward's second team and first team all conference, <coughs> first team all area in soccer. Great point average is 3.73, attending Trinity Christian College. Our first recipient ever. If I would have came up with a joke, it would have been worth a thousand bucks. I'm sorry.
thanks to students and athletes, you guys are the ones that perform improvements and all the sweat and time into this. But I want you to give a round of applause to your coaches that are going to talk because they've been at it for years. They don't do it for the paycheck. They do it to educate you through the arena of sports. Okay? If you were like I was in high school, you kind of tunnel vision on your own, your own little society of your individualism. Well, as you go through college, you're going to bump into a certain situation where it's going to remind you of what a coach did or said or, or a teammate. You know? And then when you get into life, that will happen more and more and more. So I, I want you, before you graduate, to go up to your coaches and thank them. Right? That would mean a lot to them. Keep them coming back. The ADs will appreciate that. It's hard to find good quality coaches now. But please do that. Before you graduate, reflect on some of the stuff they taught you. Okay? Don't dwell on some of the stuff maybe you disagreed with or whatever. You know, think about the things that they taught you and thank them. So I want to, we want to thank the coaches for taking the time for the nominations and not only the time for the nominations, all the time you guys put into the years with these great student athletes. I'd like to thank the ADs and staff, Dan Stangle, Kelly Gephardt, Jason, Jason no longer, <laughs> sorry Chris, Chris Hyde. <laughs> Still I've been doing this for 11 years, right? Keep the same script. Mary Reese, Doug Muccini, Ed Kohler, Al Volsheimer, <laughs> and now Christian, Dev Van Jurnen. I'd like to thank the guidance counselors and staff, Cheryl Stubbe at South, Lynn Bittany at North. We'd like to thank the Gutshaw family um, for sponsoring the $2,000 worth of uh, scholarships for two student athletes. The Canal family for their $1,000 contribution. The Godsoccer family for $1,000. The Glazier family for $1,000. The Harrison family for an additional $1,000. And we'd like to thank all the Great Iron Committee members for all their hard work they put in throughout the year at Bingos and uh, various meetings and golf outings that we have to raise the money so we can give. $16,000 out of every year. And I also would like to thank the scholarship committee. So congratulations to all this year's recipients and letter winners, everybody in here, congratulations. And we wish all of you continued success. Thank you. Thank you to all of our presenters. Congratulations to all award winners. You should feel very proud because obviously the competition is very challenging. Please remember that at the conclusion of this evening's program, we would like all award winners to come forward to this stage area for pictures of the publishing paper. It's my honor to introduce tonight's guest speaker. Known as the original Buck, John McLaughlin has been associated with the Bucks organization since the inception of the franchise in 1968. The 2013-14 season marks his 38th as analyst for the Bucks TV games and his 28th period in a broadcast booth with Jim Haskell. The duel are three-time Wisconsin Emmy Award winners for their work on the Bucks telecast. McLaughlin averaged 19.6 points per game in the Bucks inaugural season of 1968-69 and went on to play eight years in the Milwaukee uniform. His name appears in five categories on the Bucks all-time career leaders list. Named for the 1969 Eastern Division All-Star Team, Johnny Mack, as he's called, was the starting guard on the Bucks 1971 World Championship Team. For his many on-court contributions to the franchise, his number 14 jersey was retired in 1976 and currently hangs from the Raptors inside the Beemel Harris Bradley Center. McLaughlin began his NBA career in 1965 with Cincinnati, where he played two seasons before going to San Diego. An 11-year NBA vet, he scored a career scoring average of 11.6 points per game. A college standout at Indiana University, McLaughlin is a member of the Indiana University Hall of Fame, Indiana Prep Basketball Hall of Fame, and was named one of the 50 greatest players in Indiana State history. He was inducted into the Wisconsin Basketball Coaches Association Hall of Fame as a friend following his retirement from basketball in 1976. McLaughlin joined the Bucks front office and together with former Bucks broadcaster A. Set, 
Coleman, the Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer. Probably, when I talked to him, he was his proudest moment to start this fund. Serving as president of the Fund Finance Construction, the MAC Fund Research Center at the Middle College of and has contributed more than $42 million to the fight against childhood cancer. In June of 2004, after spending eight years as a trustee, he was named Trustee Emeritus for the Medical College of Wisconsin. McLaughlin is on the State Board of Directors for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. John and his wife Pam reside in Hartman, along with their son Shannon and his wife Colleen, and granddaughters Kaylee and Alana. Their daughter Megan, her husband Matt, and granddaughter Quinn reside in Delafield. Please give a great Sheboygan welcome to Mr. John McLaughlin. Athletes, coaches, administrators, members of the head table, Elks Gridiron Committee. I got it. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> the last thing you athletes need is an old guy standing up here talking to you at seven o'clock when you've been here long. Who has to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. hurry up though. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm, go I'm going to try to make it worthwhile for you, okay? I'm going to give you a potpourri of things, all right? I'm going, to, I'm going to talk fast and cut my hour speech down to about 20 minutes. Is that good? Okay. And what I want to do is, is, is really give you a lot of things quickly. So stay with me, all right? I'm going to give you a little bit of background and a few stories first. That's the fun part. Then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the MAC fund, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where you're headed from your high school years to your college years, and there are great years coming up. We've had great ones, you're going to have more great ones. So look forward to that very much. Um, I've been doing this a long time, going throughout this state, speaking at all different types of activities. In my 47 years here, I grew up in Indiana. And I have to tell you, when I come to something like this, and I sit here and I listen and I watch and I see what you've accomplished and I watch your attention, you young people, it is my honor to be here tonight. It's a privilege for me to be here with you and see what you've done and see what you're going to do as you move forward in life. It's a great thing. So thank you for allowing me to be here with you. Actually, this event, I shouldn't say this to shoes, but white shoes, I know you're out there. He came and got me to, to speak at this, and they've had some great speakers over the years. You don't need a speaker at this. This is what you have right here. This is tremendous, and it's really a privilege for me to be here. I tip my hat if I was a baseball player, I'll shoot a jumper for you because I was a basketball player. To all you young people, congratulations, great job. Now, let me just give you a little bit more on me. I grew up in a small town in Indiana, and a lot of you probably have not seen the movie Hoosiers, but the old people have. And if you haven't seen the movie Hoosiers, it's a sports story, and it's a true story. And my background was very much like that, growing up in a small town in Indiana. And you know, in a small school I played, I ran track, baseball, football, and basketball. But basketball was something that I knew from the time I could remember that God had given me an ability that was my sport. And I was always kind of tall, you know, growing up, and it was the sport of my choice, even though I played the other sports that many of you have in this room. You do it all. And the smaller the school, the more you do, because you have to. But growing up in a small town in Indiana, and being a basketball player, especially in the era that I grew up, that was kind of like heaven on earth. Because being a basketball player in Indiana was politics, religion, food, life. I never played in four years of varsity basketball. I never played in a gymnasium at home or on the road that wasn't sold out. And the world's largest high school gym is in Indiana, where the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame is. Newcastle, Indiana, it seats almost 10,000 people for basketball on Friday nights, not, not gym class. And that's the environment that I grew up in. You see, it was just everything. And I would play day and night. 
And that's what I did. And athletics became the defining thing in my life. But as you have, I have, I discovered as I went along the line, I had to be a student, I had to be a citizen, I had to be other things. And that's what athletics taught me. After all these years that I've lived and all these different professions that I've been blessed with having after basketball and announcing and business and other things, the athletic background, the athletic formula, and all the words that these coaches and all of you have heard about, commitment and motivation and dedication and all of those things. They're great words. And a lot of people don't like words like commitment today. It's a great word. It accomplishes things. And what I want to tell you is this, is that those words that become, they apply to everything in your life. Everything that it takes to be a good athlete, it takes be good at anything in your life, whether it's uh, a business person, a student, uh, eventually a parent, a grandparent, uh, involved in community activities, whatever it is, it's the same formula. So what you've done to become a good, outstanding athlete, if you want to apply that to everything in your life, you will have a shot at being successful and you will be successful in your heart because you know you did all of those things. Athletics is a great foundation in our society. Now, have you ever thought about this, how, how we value athletics in the world and in America? I mean, look at this. This is built around an athletic thing. How many things other than an athletic event will put as many people in your local gymnasium? How many things other than an athletic event will fill Camp Randall Stadium or the Cole Center, or the Bradley Center, or Miller Park, and take that around all the United States, and then take it around all of the world. How many things other than an athletic event will attract millions of people to a television set, like the World Series, the Super Bowl, the NBA playoffs, the Olympics? How many things? Not many. Unfortunately, not many. There should be others, but unfortunately it doesn't happen. So think about how we value athletics in our society. Think about it. It's highly valued. So consequently, if we form it in the right direction, the right direction, good things happen. A lot of good things happen. There are so many wonderful people in this room. Good things happen. That's how we started the Mac phone. I'm wearing my, one of my Mac phone shirts. <laughs> it, it meant that I didn't have to wear a tie. That's what I like. So. But that's a good thing. We took the limelight of athletics on my retirement night and decided we're going to raise money for childhood cancer research. So we took that limelight and we put it on the Mac Fund 37 years ago. And Eddie Doucette and I started going on radio and TV and talking about the Mac Fund. This is what we've done. The Mac Fund, Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer and Johnny Mac. That's what it was about. We raised $35,000 the first year. We were going to start calling you. Hey, Johnny Mac, if, uh, if we give you our event, will you come? I said, I'll come. Well, if we do this, will you come? We'll pass the hat if you come. So that happened all around the state of Wisconsin. And that was $35,000 37 years ago. You just gave the numbers. I think, Lee, I think you gave them the numbers. We've actually given, in June, we will have given $50 million in the fight against childhood cancer. That's what we've given. And here's what's happened. The cure rates for childhood cancer in those 37 years have gone from 37 years ago, 20%. So if children got childhood cancer 37 years ago, of any form, only 20% survived. Let me put it another way. 80% died. Today, because of research and our 50 million, the numbers are reversed. 80% are surviving. And we're trying to get to 100. But that's a great example of taking the limelight of athletics and focusing on something good. And look what we have. We're saving children's lives. We're saving families' lives. It's really important. It's a great example of what all of you can do. 
with your lives. Take the limelight of athletics and do something with it. In 1969, the year I made the NBA All-Star team, right after my first year with the Milwaukee Bucks, I was asked to go to Hawaii with some other players and do a USO film. We did it, then I was asked with two other players to go to Vietnam and be a USO show. I happened to be in the Army Reserve at the time and, and I thought that I should go. So I went with two other players and we go to Vietnam and on the way over, I was concerned, this is when it was hot and heavy, I was concerned about, well, what do we have to offer? We're just professional basketball players. A lot of these guys over there probably don't know who we are. And Bob Hope, a great entertainer, would go over all the time and, and bring other entertainers with him. And Miss America would go and Starlets would go. And they were all big hits. Well, what were we going to bring? Three basketball players. And I was there one day and I found out we had as much to offer as Bob Hope and all the entertainers and all the Miss Americas and all the Starlets. They loved us because we were professional athletes and we were from the world. And we would play 70, 80, 100 games a day against the guys. We would play everywhere we went, all over Vietnam. But my point is, is the strength, the value, the impact of being an athlete. It was a great thing for these men at that time, mostly men in Vietnam. The value of athletics, the way we value it here. And you know, we live in a world of change, and you really see it today. People up here, we didn't have as much change when we were growing up. But today it's fast and it's furious. We've seen change that you have to deal with all the time in your lives. So you have to be ready for change, whatever that means. We've seen changes in athletics. I mean, certainly I've seen it in professional sports. You heard my credentials. Well, the year we won the NBA <coughs> championship, I was making $30,000 a year. The last contract was $80,000 a year in one year. Well, if I just did what I did then and I did it today, it would be about eight to $10 million a year. And I would invite you all to my own island because that's where I would be. <laughs> that's a world of change. My first year in the NBA, we did not have trainers. I learned to take my own angles. I came out of Indiana where we had 10 trainers and they took care of us and fed us and did all these great things. Not quite like they can do at the University of Wisconsin because in Indiana we had to go to class, you know. <laughs> <laughs> O'Ryan's a personal friend of mine, and believe me, they go to class. <laughs> they might not in Kentucky. <laughs> Just think about that for a moment. <laughs> well, I can tell you the crazy stories even at night, but I won't do that here. <laughs> Where was I going? What was I talking about? I have no notes, so I don't want to. But I just want you to understand the, the, the value of athletics and, and, and what it means to you and your all. You, you all have that athletic background. I, I mean, I'm an old man, and I'm 70 years old, and I still think like an athlete. It's ingrained in me. Everything I've done is from an athletic standpoint, and, and you can do the same. I do want to share while I was talking about change. The change that has occurred in athletics, I mean, it's incredible, but it changes in the world. And so you have to be ready to change as well. And I thought what I would do is just share with you a couple things, and then I, I won't go much longer. Um, but I would like to tell you a few stories. I have so many stories. If literally if we had two hours, I would start telling you stories <laughs> and, and uh, about uh, announcing, about playing, about different eras, about athletes. I mean, I'm asked all the time, well, you know, who, is LeBron James the greatest athlete of all time was Michael Jordan. Well, if you've got a little age on you in this room, I would say, well, what about Oscar Robertson? And what about Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell? And then there's Larry Bird. So I'm asking all these questions, and you can't compare eras easily. But I, I would tell you this, that probably if I picked the 10 or 15 greatest players of all time, the majority of them would probably come from um, the 60s, 70s and 80s, quite frankly, because of what some of them had accomplished and what some of them did over time. Where does a Michael Jordan, which you would of course know the name of, and LeBron James, and where would they rate? Very high, and they would be in that bracket. But they dealt with a world of change as well. But I want to give you uh, one story, okay? 
Um, when I came into the NBA out of high school and then college at Indiana University, in high school and college, as a basketball player, I had no weaknesses. I could do everything. Nobody could beat me. And even at the Big Ten level, I was one of the better players. I could compete with anybody. No weaknesses. I came to the NBA and I discovered I had about 15 weaknesses. <laughs> because when you go from high school to the Big Ten, it's a jump like this. And then you go from the Big Ten to the NBA, it was like as high as the ceiling. Because they're all great players. And you suddenly find, well, I'm slow, I can't jump, I can't go left well, I can't put it, I can't do this, I can't guard that. That's what you discover. And you discover the physical strength of the athletes, even in my era, before we had weight training at the level they have today, before we knew about carbohydrates the way they do today, and the way that the training methods are. We had one and two coaches. We have eight now on many teams that work with the players. We did most of it ourselves in the offseason. But the power. Now, if I were to ask any of you, if you remember Shaquille O'Neal, you remember he's really a big dude, man, and people say the strongest guy that they've ever seen in the NBA, and perhaps that's true. But there was a player before him that the older people in the room and in the other room will know about. His name is Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain was 7'1", weighed 300 pounds, had a body fat of about 4%, and was the strongest player that I had ever played against. <coughs> He was the guy that has scored 100 points in a game. No one's ever done that. His best year, he averaged 50 points and 28 rebounds a game in the NBA. Now, did you hear what I just said? 50 points and 28 rebounds back when there were nine NBA teams, which means he played against Bill Russell, the greatest defensive player of all time for the Boston Celtics. He played against Bill Russell 10 times a year. He didn't play against the forward or Wayne Embry, who was dominant, and he averaged 50 and 28. So I'm a rookie in the NBA with the Cincinnati Royals, and we're playing Philadelphia in Philadelphia, where he was playing. And I always heard that Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love. Don't believe it. <laughs> and I discovered it that night. I'm sitting there as a rookie out of Indiana on the bench, and I'm watching these fans who literally, when you would take the ball out, the fans were right here. They were grab you and do naughty things. <laughs> they would throw bottles. I mean, it was, it was not nice. So I'm watching Will Chamberlain, and I'm going to have to guard Hal Greer, who's a 15-year old star. So I go in the game, and I'm guarding Hal Greer. They throw the ball into Chamberlain, and he was on the left, uh, the right, let's see, the, the right box, okay? You know what I mean, the box down at the bottom of the room? The ball goes into it. Greer cuts. I'm guarding Greer. I go with it. As I pass Greer, as I go with Greer, we pass Chamberlain. As I pass Chamberlain, he lowers the ball between his legs to make a move to the basket to dunk the ball. So I decide, well, I'm either going to time up for a jump ball, which is ridiculous, I couldn't jump, but you sort of play the game the right way, or take the ball away from him, which I couldn't do either. <laughs> as I grab the ball, Chamberlain is on his way to the basket to dunk the ball. The next thing I know, I'm on the way to the basket to dunk the ball. <laughs> now, I have the ball like this. He takes me off the floor. I let go in midair, fall back, hit my head. He dunks it, ran down to the other end, and never knew I was on the other end of the ball. Now, I played at 6'5", 205 pounds. I decided that as a strong man, I will never do that again. <laughs> but when I saw, I, I, never, I had never seen a player of the power of a Wilt Chamberlain until Shaquille O'Neal came in, who was a dominant player, but he was not the talent that a Wilt Chamberlain was. But it's an example just of how the world changes and how athletics changes and how the power of athletes then and today was one of the things that I was most aware of as an athlete. And it's something that I think if you adapt yourself in life to the changes you'll face, then I think it's something that will help you not only as an athlete, it'll help you as a student and whatever else you elect to do. And I'd like to just finish this thought for you. You're all very bright, accomplished, 
And I think it's a wonderful thing. And as you move through your life, okay, as you move through your life, think about staying focused on others and being involved in other activities like Mac Fund and, and, and different things that come along. You see, the two greatest commandments we were ever given in the Bible is to focus upward, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Consequently, it's saying be focused outward. The greatest college coach of all time, his name is John Wooden. He coached at UCLA. He coached Kareem and many other great players. <coughs> and he's the greatest coach of all time, one, because I know him, knew him, and I think he is the greatest college coach of all time. If you look at his record, he is. And he had many great sayings. He was a very religious man, a great American citizen. And he said many things that I could come in here and read them to you, and there would be great knowledge for all of you to take. But the one that I want to bring to you tonight has to do with what I'm talking about, about focusing outward as you go through your lives and trying to give and be community-oriented and helping with whatever you do and wherever you are in your life because it'll make us a better community. And I, I will tell you this. I get calls from around the country over the years about how can we start a MAC fund in Indianapolis? How do we start a MAC fund in Cleveland? And I tell people, I'm, I'm not sure you could because you need the ingredients of the athletic thing and, and commitment by certain people. Um, and, and I'm not sure it would work. But I would like to say this also. I'm not sure it would work like it has here because of the people of Wisconsin. The people of Wisconsin are so giving and committed and caring and outwardly focused that a MAC fund comes along this new thing that raised $35,000 the first year and now is given $50 million. I'm not sure it happened everywhere. We care here about each other, and it's a great thing. So what did Coach Wooden say? Many things. But here's the one I want to bring you. He said, you have not lived a perfect day until you can do something kind for someone who can never repay you. So if you think that way and you stay outwardly focused in your life, you can have great success. And I wish that for all of you. To wherever you're going, the different colleges and universities, whatever you're doing, do well. Congratulations on tonight. And it's been my privilege to be here with you. It really has. Thanks.